Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Once you have a website set up, what are you going to do with it? And if you haven't already registered your own website domain name, you know you can use the GoDaddy coupon code Chris, Chris1, Chris2, Chris3 over on GoDaddy.com and you can save something like 10%. Well, you can save some amount of money. That's good considering that GoDaddy is one of our partner slash sponsors. Got an email here from Sean Barron and he says he gets a lot of people asking questions on how to start a website, how to set one up, but then what he wanted to concentrate his top five list on is how to keep it running, how to maintain something. You know, even though you've got something, what are you gonna put there? You gotta put something there, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you've got your data spread all over the web. You put something on MySpace, you put something on YouTube, you put something on Twitter, and pretty soon you're all over the place. What are you gonna put on your own website? Anybody know? What are you going to put? Well, everyone's going to have a different answer to that question, but here are some general guidelines. Number five, always have an attractive title. You want your website to represent what your site is all about, but you don't want to go into too much detail. Say you make a website about your new super amazing speakers that everyone will want to buy. Don't title the website super amazing speakers that everyone will want to buy.com. It's a little too long. No one's going to remember that, and it won't attract too many customers. Keep it short and simple and to the point, such as smooth e-speakers or something like that. Sounds catchy, it has flow, and people want to know what your website's about. More importantly, and this is my own addendum, um, if that's your domain name, you wouldn't want to publish stuff about doll collecting on a web domain that has got speakers in the title. You know what I mean? So... If anything, you know, keep the domain relevant to the content that's on it. Or do what I did and register a domain that has absolutely no true phrase or word associated with it. Locker gnome. What does that mean? What does locker gnome mean? I, I struggle to this day to define it. But I can do anything with the domain. Number four, make your website user-friendly. So people have made it to your website, you don't want them to leave. So never make things too complicated. When they enter the website, things should be easy to get around to. If your website is, yet again, about speakers, make the speakers easy to get to. When they enter the site, they shouldn't have to click 48 links and open 25 new windows to get the speakers. Also, make sure it's easy to get those links. Don't put the links in the tiniest font possible and then put them in a blue font in front of a dark blue background. That would be a hassle to find every time you entered that website. The website shouldn't be just about you, especially if you're a public website. So, bringing it back to maintaining, um, you want to add some air of freshness to your website. And that's why a lot of people install blog software. It's why some people rely on um, software that automatically keeps their websites up to date in the form of widgets or what have you. Uh, but the design is going to be very, very important. It's, I would say, increasingly becoming crucial to the way your brand is perceived on the internet. It wasn't always that way. Uh, but I think that probably within the next year or so, we're going to see a huge shift in terms of the way people see design in relation to the website. Uh, I mean, so even if you haven't updated it to this, this point right now, and you've got a website that's been around for a while, take the time to change something today. Because you never know who's looking and then going, ah, it looks like junk, I'm going elsewhere. Hey, it's not my visitor that I'm losing. Number three, a little advertisement goes a long way. There's money in the brand. Let everyone know you're there. Before they can get to your website, they have to find it. And honestly, not many people look up random topics to find a place to hang out or make a purchase. Everyone usually finds out about a website through the grapevine. So put your website links in your profiles and all the places you hang out on the net. People will see that you use it, and if you're a close friend, they probably choose to do business with you. And make sure you tell your real-life friends that you have a website. When they check it out and they like it, they'll most likely tell your friends. Word travels fast across the internet. It's the one reason why, number one, I'm publishing in YouTube and saying, hey, we're at live.perillo.com. Uh, but it's another reason why I feel that, you know, having some kind of dynamic presence in all these social networks is important so long as you are able to say, hey, here's what I'm doing elsewhere on the web. You don't want to live inside of someone else's silo. For argument's sake, let's say MySpace disappears tomorrow. What happens to all the people who had blogs on MySpace and were sharing MySpace URLs? I mean, it's, it's not very comforting. It's nice that it's there because I can network with people in a different way, all my quote-unquote MySpace friends, but, you know, where do you exist on the web? It's important to have a place to exist on the web that you know you're going to have. 
you know you own that place on the web. And then keeping it up to date with all the data that you're pushing out from all these different places. Everyone has widgets these days. Put the widgets on your website if you don't want to design it. And widgets are like pre-designed mini web pages that you can put onto a web page. So you can make your main page, your site, completely dynamic without doing much anything different than what you're doing today. But letting people know where you are, I think, is extremely important. They're going to find you, more often than not, through Google. If you're not listed in Google, you're absolutely nowhere. Thing is, you got to be careful about spamming your link. Some communities don't like that. You know, just throw it in a signature file. Now, of course, we have a chat room here, so there are no signature files, and we really kind of frown upon people spamming their links because people do it all the time. It's just not... It's not appropriate behavior in a chat room. In a forum, it's appropriate in a signature. In a chat room, not so much. So use that with caution. Number two, everyone needs help sometimes. Running a website won't always be easy. Sometimes you need a little help. It's okay to hire a staff of friends, family, or even strangers who apply for the job. If they do their job right, they'll be great help, and you won't constantly have to check up on your website. Obviously, you want the viewers and our customers to be attended to. A little help can help you do that. It's like a real-life business, if not more efficient in the way that real life businesses will usually have more than one person running them. Because unless that businessman or businesswoman wants to stay awake for 24 hours a day running the website, then I suggest finding an employee or two. Volunteers recommended. Um, I couldn't run this chat room by myself. I certainly couldn't do a lot of the video stuff that I do on my own. Um, you know, I need help from as many different directions as I can take it. What I've learned over time is that if I ask someone to do something, and it's not really what they want to do or they're not interested in it or they're not learning anything from it, then that's probably not the right person to hand something to. I try because I think there's there's potential potentially in working potential potentially in working with somebody else uh, in, in any capacity, but it's like asking a developer friend of mine if he wants to do sysadmin work on the website and that's just not what they're interested in. They're more interested in web dev stuff. So then I found a sysadmin and I said Will you do this? And he said, yeah, I do that. That's what I do. I'm like, great, cool. That's what you do. So as long as you, the job description fits what they want to do, what their interest, where their interest lies, where they're being uh, challenged the most, where they're learning the most, then that, I think, is, is kind of a perfect storm. And I'm not going to name any names because inevitably I'll leave someone out and then it'll turn into a whole, like, just meltdown of emotion. And I, I don't want to go that far. Needless to say, if you're helping me, I thank you. I do. That's a sincere thank you. And number one, update, update, update. And we're going to go back a couple points here. Things are being done in this world fast. Technology runs faster than we can. Sometimes it may seem hard to stay with keeping things fresh, but it's the best way to keep a website active. Make sure you always update your website's info. Whether you're updating because of the world news or you're updating because of personal issues, keeping the viewer or customer notified is always important. You don't want people to think a website is closing because you haven't been there in a while. Make sure you let the public in on or let the public in on what is going on. And with new technology coming out, it's hard to stay ahead in the crowd, but it sure is important too. Make sure if you're selling something, you always have the latest merchandise. No one wants to find a pair of speakers from 1987 to buy in the year 2015. Uh, so these are some tips to help keep your website running, both you know pretty sp sp specific to uh, more of the, uh, I would say just to me, logical side of things. And I know, I'm trying to think of different ways that you can more easily keep your site up to date, like I said, putting widgets on a web page, if you're putting content elsewhere, well, the widgets will help keep everything kind of compiled into these mini pages. I don't know, how else do you get to describe widgets? And to me, that's exactly why you'd want to install some blog software that'll make it easy to post updates. And I happen to be working on a premium WordPress theme. It's going to be like, uh, I, I can't share too many details, but if you run WordPress, I'm working on a way that you can make your website, whether it's a brand website or just a personal website, uh, where you can make it just always up to date with all the content that you're producing elsewhere, like on YouTube or, or Flickr or you know, possibly, most likely beyond like Twitter and, and what have you, uh, as well as you know, being a blog in general. And think of uh, blog software, like way back in the day, you would say, well, I want a website uh, that has uh, a way that I can publish web pages, uh, I want to publish some images, I want to do this here, and I want to have that here. And you, you would basically create this, this collection of tools to get content published. 
Well, then, you know, CMSs have adapted content management systems, but then blog software came out and said, okay, here you go. There are all the tools you need. Now I'm installed, now you can do anything you want. The blog software makes it easier for you to do all these little pieces. Someone mentioned Joomla. I'd rather run my face along a cheese grater for a half hour straight than use Joomla again. Sorry, not to offend any Joomla fans. Uh, or any cheese grater fans, as the case might be. My email address is chrisatperillo.com. Feel free to email me or chastise me for my uh, CMS slandering. Hey, it's just my choice. Anyway, uh, if you've got any other tips to help someone keep their website up to date, uh, I'd certainly be interested in uh, reading them um, and sharing them with the rest of the community because a lot of people are getting websites these days. You know, I, I know that uh, I enjoy blogging at chris.perillo.com. I enjoy sharing my live life opposed to my debt life with people from all around the world and that's why I've got this live stream going on we've got 837 people watching right now can you believe it they're watching a geek wax pathetic about keeping a website up to date so if 837 p 838 people have no life no I'm not I'm not trying to fit uh oh it's going down uh, it's 826 now okay uh, I mean they have a life they're just uh, uh, enjoying sharing uh, Geek topics, tips, tricks, tech stuff, software, hardware. We're talking about all sorts of stuff. And we're waiting for you to stop by. So what are you waiting for? We're at live.perillo.com. We'll see you later.